What's up guys, super quick video today, just gonna tell you how to create a binary tree. So this is gonna help you get your assignment done. It's not gonna do the whole assignment for you, but it should give you a nice start if you haven't done this already. So here you can see that uh, the code that I'm about to show you is available in my algorithms repository on GitHub. And um, I have my code open here in IntelliJ so that I can show you it, run it, and debug it for you. Uh, first, I'm gonna explain it a little bit. So you can see my main program is very simple. Um, let's talk about it for a second before we actually do anything. So I'm assuming a sorted list. What does that first comment mean? So if you think about this in the context of the assignment, the assignment is to create a, a database of sorts and be able to do a search and not just any search. We're not going to be searching every single node in the tree and then come up with um, you know, the, the query results. We're not going to do an exhaustive search. Uh, that would be, well, for lack of a better word, cheating. Not really cheating, but easy and extremely inefficient. So uh, we don't like uh, extremely inefficient. So easy is good, but uh, extremely inefficient is bad. So we want to do a fast sort, just in, uh, or sorry, a fast search, just in case we have like a million uh, elements in the uh, list or in the collection. So the reason that we're assuming a sorted list is because sorted lists uh, give us the ability to do a binary search. So with a sorted list, we can create a binary tree and do a binary search, which gives us logarithmic performance as the size of the data set grows. What does that mean? It means that if we have a million elements in the list, at the very first decision point at the top of the tree, let's say we have a, million, a, a tree of size 1 million, and at the very top, the value of the root is 100. And if, we, if at that point we know we're searching for the number 50, we can move to the left of the tree because 50 is less than 100 and igno completely ignore or prune or cut the, the entire right branch of the tree eliminating 500,000 elements. So at every step, at every decision point of the binary search, you're eliminating half of the entire data set, which is logarithmic search performance. So uh, w this basically means that no matter how big the list gets, even if it's a billion or a trillion items, you can actually do very, very fast searches. So uh, that's the, the, you know, I just want to elucidate that, you know, in this assignment, you can't just traverse the entire tree and look at every node trying to find what you're looking for. You have to do a binary search. Um, that's that's kind of the point. So um, we're assuming we have a sorted list. Well, we wrote a, uh, a merge sort in our last assignment. You can use that if you want to. If you lost your merge sort or if you deleted it because you hated it, uh, you can just use uh, the arrays.sort method, which is in the java.util library. So uh, I'm going to guide you through how to create a binary tree out of a, an already sorted data set. Uh, in this case, just some integers that are uh, in ascending order to showcase how to create the tree. And it'll be up to you to actually traverse the tree, um, make the decisions at each point to know whether to go left or right, and then return the search results, and so on and so forth. And also, of course, you're gonna be using objects with strings in them uh, that you're gonna be searching based upon instead of integers. So with that being said, um, let's just get into the code and how it works. So I have four examples here. I have two normal cases and I have two edge cases. So what does that really mean? We're not really gonna know until we get into the code. Um, but if we think about it for a second, um, when you look at those edge cases, I mean, they kind of make sense. Like, well, if you're creating a tree of size one, uh, you know, a binary tree of size one, binary trees by definition have at least, or sorry, at most two children. So I came up with this crude visualization of what a node could possibly look like. So on the far right, you could have just a node that doesn't really have any children. Uh, you could have a node that has one child that has a larger value than itself. You could have a node that has one child with a smaller value than itself. And you could have a node that has two ch two children, one uh, being one containing an entire branch of smaller values and one containing an entire branch of bigger values. Uh, so this is, uh, sorry, the far left is kind of the normal case and then these three on the right are basically where you're done you hit the leaf nodes so I'm just gonna minimize that just in case I need to use it later so I think the best way to look at this is to um, first kind of look at the results and then we'll look at the code as to how we got there so I'm going to set a breakpoint at the end and I'm gonna debug through this so I'm gonna start with the edge cases if we say um, I want to create a binary tree out of the array 1525. I'm going to pull this back up here. We're basically going to um, 
have one of these because there's only two nodes, right? So there's three nodes over here and there's only one node over here. So in the middle, these are the only really two cases we have. So at some point in my code, I'm going to have to make an arbitrary decision of when I reach uh, this ba this uh, edge case of I'm only I only have two values in my array. Do I want to put the bigger value at the at the top of the branch and then put the smaller value to the left, or do I want to put the smaller value um, on top and put the bigger value to the right? It's completely arbitrary. I think I chose to put the the smaller value to the left. So we should see here uh, 15 or sorry uh, 25 as the root which we do. So here at the root we have a value of 25, there's nothing to the right, and there's a left child of 15. So again, that's uh, the second example here. And so if I look at the one above it, that's even easier. We expect to just see one um, node with a value of 15. So that's straightforward. Left child and right child are both null. So here's where it gets interesting, is where we have um, the, the two actual uh, real arrays that create big trees. So the odd one is actually the easiest because if you visualize it, the 45 is going to be the root, right? Because everything, uh, the binary tree is kind of symmetrical. Everything uh, smaller, the median actually becomes the root and everything smaller goes to the left and everything bigger goes to the right. So it's kind of the key to understanding how to build the binary tree is understanding that the median value is always the root. That's pretty much all there is to it. So we expect to see a tree with 45 as the root, and then a branch on the left containing those three values, and a branch on the right containing 55, 65, 75. And if we open it up in our explorer here, we can actually see 45 is indeed the root. On the left, we see uh, uh, another smaller branch with 25 being the root of that branch, and it'll have 15 on the left and 35 on the right, which is good. And then on the right side, we're gonna have the same thing with 65 as the root and left side 55, right side 75. So this is really, really nice, easy to visualize. The even one is a little harder to visualize because the um, the root is actually the 55. So the right side is easy to look at because it's gonna have a seven, 75 as the root, 65 on the left and 85 on the right. So that's pretty easy to look at. But the left child is uh, gonna be more interesting. It's like, hmm, I wonder what the median of a, a, a list of four is. And the median turns out to be 35. And you'll see in the code why the median turned out to be 35 instead of 25, right? So we'll look at that. Uh, but anyway, the median is 35. So the right side, we're gonna expect to see a single node with 45, which we do, null, null. And then on the left side, we expect to see a 25 with 15 to the left. And that was actually this is actually another ver uh, another implementation of that this edge case where we're, we're tr trying to split a branch. We're actually creating a, a branch out of an array of two values, so the 15 and the 25. Bam, 25, 15 to the left. So that's everything, and it works. The question is, how does it work? And it's actually not that bad. So if we look at this class I've created, and I'm going to just make this bigger so you can see it all. So the two base cases we'll talk about first because they're easy. Uh, the first base case was, well, what if they give us an array of size 0? Well, that means there's only, or sorry, the array of size 1. Well, that means there's only one number, and we're in this situation over here where we don't have any children. Well, that's pretty easy. We just set the value and we're done. So that's a no-brainer. Um, oh, I should have mentioned that um, <laughs> I created this node class, and the, the obvious, I, th I guess I assumed this is obvious, but a node has a value, it has a left child, and it has a right child. Um, and the constructor... Also, inferred from the invocation, I, sh I shouldn't assume that that's, that's obvious, but assumed uh, that it was obvious from the invocation that um, you, create a, you create a node by passing it an array of values. So the second base case is, well, what if the array of values that we get in the constructor is um, a length of two, right? So um, this is the, the case that we saw both here and when we got down to that so this was the, the entire the left side of the tree and then this was the left side of the branch so in both of those cases it hit this case and it said well we have two numbers how do we create a binary tree with two numbers so remember i said it's kind of arbitrary you have to choose either uh this guy here or this guy here and i chose this one so i was like okay i'm going to take the bigger value put it as the root and then i'm going to create a new node and make it the left child with that value so that's what I did. I computed what the min and the max values were out of those two numbers that we got in the, in the uh, param uh, constructor parameters, uh, parameter, the array. And I used the bigger value to set the uh, this particular node's 
uh, value, and then I just instantiated a new node for the left child with the smaller value. Easy. Now comes the real part. You know, that, that was easy. This is the real part, identifying the actual uh, recursive um, algorithm. So it was important, you know, to, to give you guys exposure to recursion so that you guys could see, do things like this. And, you know, it's really, uh, it, recursion makes things that seem hard like this really, really easy. So, I mean, look, look, look at how easy this is, what we're doing. So the first thing I do is I just compute the median. And why is computing the median important and why is it length divided by two? Well, obviously the median is important because it identifies which element in the array is the root. So it's extremely important. So why length divided by two? The reason length divided by two is because in this first array, in the odd case, uh, for this particular uh, case, we have seven, and seven divided by two is 3.5. And since doing integer division chops off the remainder, we get a value of three. So zero, one, two, three. So the median being three in this case is correct. So we th that's, that's all there is to it, is we divide by two. The even case is a little weirder. So this is eight, and eight divided by two is four, obviously. And if we go zero, one, two, three, four, then we would have a median of 55. So that's fine. You know, the median basically tells us where the middle of the list is. That's all that matters for, for line 27 here. Once we have the median, uh, it's, you know, the rest of this is pretty easy. We just say, okay, we know the median, so chop up, chop up the array into a left side and a right side that do not include the median value. So that's exactly what we were doing before. So this would be the left, the left array, this would be the right array, and that would be the median. And then we simply say, uh, th we do three lines of code. This is the easiest one. We say the, the, uh, the array indexed by the median is the root. That's the root value, that's the easy one. These ones are a, a little more subtle. So these are the recursive calls where we say, well, if, if we actually have a value, or, uh, some numbers here, we don't wanna do anything if the array size is zero, but if we actually have some numbers to work with here, let's start over and build another branch using the left array. So that's how we got the, the recursive behavior of, you know, hey, let's, you know, let's start over and build a new branch out of this smaller uh, subset branch. So by using recursion, we, we kind of abbreviate the algorithm to the general case like you saw in the last video. What this says is find the median, um, cut off everything left to the, to the left side of the median, cut everything to the right side of the median, and put those, create new brand, new, well actually it really says create new trees from those, and then it, it assembles them all together to form the, the big tree at the end. So that's really all, all there is to it. It's just these two base cases and the general case here. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, I explained it really that great, but hopefully uh, armed with your knowledge from the, the last video of recursion, you can, you can kind of understand that um, by picking apart, this is kind of like what we call a divide and conquer algorithm, by picking apart the array and saying, pick out the median value, chop it up and chop the other values up to the left side and the right side, and then rinse and repeat, we end up building the entire tree. So you can debug this on your own. It's, uh, you know, like I said, it's on GitHub uh, to, to see how it works, if, if what I said doesn't make sense. But I wanted to at least get you started with understanding how to build the binary tree, because it's not hard. It's really easy. Like, you know, it's, it just took me a couple of minutes to write this. Um, like I said before, you guys are going to have to um, make this a little more uh, complex and sophisticated in order to work with objects that have strings inside of them and uh, do a binary search based on the, the string values, uh, doing uh, the strings inside of the objects, doing alphabetical comparisons to see which ones are greater or less than. But I digress. So um, I guess that's all for now. And uh, let me know on Blackboard if you have any questions. All right, cool. I am out of here. Later.